Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our family table. We are so happy that you are here joining us this evening. Um, I would like to have our guest panelists to introduce themselves. Um, we'll go from left to right, uh, starting with Mr. King. Oh, good evening, everyone. I'm Mr. King, eighth grade assistant principal. Good evening, everyone. Janine Henderson, PTSA president. Hello. Good evening, I'm Ms. Payne, I'm the seventh grade assistant principal. Mr. Carante. Good evening, I am Mr. Emerson Carante. I'm a seventh grade science teacher. Also, I am the upper campus middle school science department chair and STEM fair coordinator. Ms. Crook. Good, good evening. This is Ms. Crook, assistant principal for kindergarten through second grade. Ms. Brackett. Good evening, I'm Ms. Brackett. I'm the media specialist. Dr. Jelks. Good evening, my name is Dr. Jelks, sixth grade assistant principal, welcome. Ms. Morphew. Ms. Ford Ben. Good evening. I'm Ms. Ford Ben, eighth grade tag science teacher. Ms. Cruz. Good evening. I'm Lorraine Cruz, elementary reading instructional lead teacher. Ms. Edmonston. Ms. Montz. Good evening, I'm Shantae Montz, fifth grade reading and social studies teacher. Thank you all, welcome this evening. I am Judy Adams, I'm the principal at Akakik Academy. And um, I wanna start this evening uh, with our agenda for this evening. We have a lot on our agenda based on all the people that we have in the audience this evening. I hope that you will take in all of this information, but please keep in mind that the presentations that you see this evening will be posted on our website under the family table. Um, first, I'd like to speak with you this evening about our parent survey, fall survey. We had over 250 respondents. We were hoping for a lot more, but um, 250 gives us a reasonable understanding of what your expectations are of us. Um, and so one of the things that was mentioned was changing the family table to every two weeks, 37% of the respondents. So we will be moving to every two weeks um, beginning today. Um, we did not have it last week, so uh, we are on track to be um, every two weeks. Um, our parent informational meetings in the evening, 59% of you wanted it, all meetings in the evening. Our parent presentations, um, the choices were technology um, resources at 24%, 23% was reading strategies, and 20% was homework assistance. Um, also, how do you want your electronic information? 49% of you wanted email and 42% wanted class dojo. So we have an even split and we will continue to communicate with you in that way. Um, other parts of the survey um, was that safety of the students and staff, uh, people prefer to stay virtual. Um, a lot of thank yous and appreciation of our teachers for engaging instruction. And also a lot of comments around teacher work ethic, uh, patience and responsiveness. So I thank my teachers for that. Uh, shout out to our specialists and creative arts teachers. A lot of comments with regard to their creativity um, and how they've done projects. Uh, many parents like the um, new connection that they've established with their own children. And it's been wonderful from some parents' perspective to see their children learning and getting a better perspective of how they learn. Um, in terms of those things that people are concerned about, uh, technology and internet issues, um, would like to see more socialization opportunities with their children. Uh, student focus uh, and attention is an ongoing concern. Assignments are too long, but love the student projects. 
um, they would like more, you would like more breaks and less screen time and more small groups along with more individualized feedback. Um, I want to uh, just comment for just a second that there were a lot of great ideas that were posted in the um, survey itself. And so we are considering many of those ideas. And so you will see some things that are the result of that survey. So we thank you for uh, responding. And we also thank you for giving us ideas because that is part of how we build our partnership during this virtual learning. So in terms of the question with regard to how to realign our budget, 47% uh, of you wanted us to spend it on educational materials for family use at home. So we are gonna be considering what that looks like. Um, technology resources uh, was 46% of you responded and 5% wanted parent workshops. Those were the three top budget ideas that were presented. So we thank you sincerely for your contribution to how we move forward in our improvement of virtual learning. I do want to remind everyone who had not been um, picked up their materials that tomorrow, Wednesday, from 3 to 6 p.m. will be a makeup day for materials. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Janine Henderson to come forward. She is our PTSA president, Ms. Henderson. Hello again. Thank you, Dr. Adams. You're welcome. I wanted to start out by um, encouraging folks to continue to join. Um, we have the page up, Mr. King, if you're going to go to the PTSA page, I wanted to show you all that if you just log in to our website, go to our website store, from the store, it's going to transfer you over to Member Hub, where you're able to join. You can select which item you put it in your cart, you purchase, and you're a member. It's that easy. Um, you'll get your membership cards electronically this year. And um, right now, we're running an amazing opportunity for our members. Those that join will be entered into a $50 gift card um, winner. So within uh, the next few weeks, by November the 7th, we're gonna make a selection through all the members that have joined and, and became a member by the 7th. We're gonna announce the winner on the 12th, which is also gonna be our first virtual PTSA meeting on November 12th at 7 p.m. It's gonna be by Zoom. So I encourage you to visit our website and look around and Give us ideas and feel free to share photos and, and moments of virtual learning that we can uh, put out on our website to let folks know what we're doing and how our kids are doing. Because again, we're working with the school. So we would love to feature you and your family uh, working virtually on the website. And again, for that, that uh, membership, if you join by November 7th, your name could be entered into an opportunity to win a $50 gift card just in time for the holidays, if you celebrate the holidays, or for however you choose to use your gift card. But there will be a winner. The winner will be announced at the meeting on, on November the 12th. Um, on another note, we know today is Amazon Prime, today and tomorrow. So I encourage you all to go to Amazon Smiles, make your purchases. And again, that comes back to the school. We're working together with the school and that's a, a way to raise funds to plan for our future, for our future fundraisers and events because we're all coming together again really soon. So that's a good way. And lastly, I wanted to say that there are two um, exciting things going around. Miss um, Crook may can speak on it. We have a virtual field trip form that we're sending out to parents and encouraging parents to share with us what skills you may have, what businesses you may have, or experiences that you can offer us an opportunity to do virtual field trips with our kids and sponsor that. Um, you can look out for it if you haven't received it already to sign up for something and tell us what your specialty is and what you would like to see us offer. Um, I know some schools are going to the African American Museum and they're doing it virtually. So there's so many things that we can do um, virtually, but please look out for that. 
And the last item is the kudos corner. Uh, you may have received that already. If you haven't, look out for that as well. It's a chance for you to give kudos to this amazing administration that we have here, the teachers, all of us that are coming together to make this a better year, uh, considering that we are virtual. So the virtual kudos is also an opportunity for you to go out there um, and you know give honor, praise, and just a special thank you for the teachers' patience and time that they're putting in and let us know what PTSA can do to help you as parents, as well as the teachers, um, to give you breaks, you know, to sit in your classes, to monitor your classes. We're open to all suggestions. So with that, I think I'm done. Again, Amazon Smiles today and tomorrow. Don't forget that. And make sure you become a member by the 7th to take in a chance on winning um, the $50 gift, uh, Visa gift card. So thank you so much for this time and you all have a good evening. Okay, hi, I'm, I'm Ms. Paula Edmiston. I think I was muted when I was asked to uh, introduce myself. I'm so sorry. Um, I um, work at the lower campus now. I'm a special ed resource teacher. However, I spend the majority of my years at the upper campus where I had the um, uh, privilege of teaching or co-teaching, I should say, seventh grade science with some wonderful, wonderful colleagues. And I see some of them here tonight. Um, I've been asked to talk to you all tonight about the um, Acting Geek Academy uh, Science Bowl Club. I have, um, since I started, uh, it was middle school kids. Um, so that's that's why it's there. Because Akakik Academy is what it is an academy, we cannot have a lower campus elementary and an upper campus uh, middle school team. So I've stuck with the, um, the middle school. But anyway, who should join um, the Akakik Academy Science Bowl Club? If you love competition, who doesn't? If you have a strong passion or an interest for science like I did as a child and even now, you should consider joining. Um, if you're looking maybe as a possibility, I know you're young yet, but if you're looking at maybe going into some field of science, you know, as a career, and I've just listed a whole bunch of them. Um, when I was on the police department, forensic science, which is now actually a separate um, category, um, was just up and coming, toxicology, genetics, you name it, archeology. span um, so very, very um, you know, worthwhile. Like I said, if you like to compete though, and you like science, we need you, okay? We're, we're on a big recruiting drive here. And uh, the, we at, at Acting Geek Academy, we are just one part of the whole entire Prince George's County Public Schools Science Bowl that is done by Dave Zarin. Um, you know, he's known as Mr. Z. Um, anyone who's been around the Washington metropolitan area for a while knows that he's a former meteorologist on Channel 7, um, ABC. Um, but anyway, he runs that and it's a weekly game show where students from different schools around the county actually compete, okay, and try to test their um, um, science IEQ, um, IQ rather. Um, so now we're getting back to what we are. We uh, at Akakik, we are an extracurricular activity, okay, it's academic, but it is a club, is student centered. I'm there, I facilitate yes to a certain point, but the students, they own it and they do whatever. Um, basically, what do we do? We get ready for competition. That's, that's what it's all about. So we develop questions, we watch videos of past competitions, um, and we just focus on whatever strategies and tactics we can come up with, okay, for a fierce competition against our other schools here in the county. But the main important thing is to have fun. Next. Oh, here we go. Um, so um, Science Bowl is actually open to all current fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. And the reason for that is the fifth graders will be going to middle school next year, so they would automatically qualify. But then the sixth and seventh and, and, and eighth, they're already there. And also my team that I currently have, um, three of the, well, 75% are eighth graders. You know what that means. They're getting ready to get promoted at the end of this year. They're going to high school. Okay, um, our meetings generally last no more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how excited the kids are with whatever we're doing. Okay, and you, uh, it just goes in here, tells you right now everything's virtual, virtual, virtual. And I post everything through a uh, Science Bowl Google Classroom. Okay, and so that's where all the pertinent information would be um, posted. But if anyone is interested, uh, please reach out to me uh, via email at paula.edmiston at prince george county public schools.org. And I will gladly send you the class code 
to join the Akik Academy Upper Campus Science Bowl classroom. And then you will have the link, which you can um, have every week to join us, usually on Wednesdays at four o'clock. Okay, and just miscellaneous here, I think I've already driven the point home that we are actively recruiting new members. All right, as I said, our team is comprised mostly of eighth graders and they're gonna be going on to high school. All right, we have to start rebuilding so we can get ready for next year. As a matter of fact, I've added on here, newsflash, Active Kick Academy is actually participating. Okay, tomorrow we're competing against Robert Goddard. Unfortunately, Robert Goddard, they beat us in the semifinals last year, but we, strongest year ever was last year, but we lost to Robert Goddard. So guess what? We're gonna get them tomorrow, okay? That's at 11 a.m. So be thinking about our Eagles, okay? It's time for them to show what they know. So I appreciate it. But if you're, you're interested, please, please consider joining. Thank you. So I will be speaking on the Parents Guide to Google Classroom. Um, next slide. So Google Classroom um, is available to parents um, for email summaries which includes your scholars activity in Google Classroom, but it does not include grades. For grades, you should definitely continue to reference school max, check with your student or contact the teacher. In the email summaries that you receive, you can review missing work, um, the work that was not turned in by the time the summary was sent, upcoming work that's due today or tomorrow for daily emails or in the upcoming week for weekly emails and class activities, announcements, and any questions posted by the teacher. To receive the email summaries, you have to have a free Gmail um, email account and you have to be invited by your scholar's teacher. You log in once you've received the invitation, click accept. Um, if you're the parent, you, you know, stay with that. And if you're not, you click, I'm not the guardian. Um, you only needed to be invited by one teacher to receive updates from all Google Classroom accounts. Um, for security reasons, you have to have a Google account to receive the summaries. It will not go to any other email account and you have 120 days to accept the invitation before it expires. You can unsubscribe at any time. To manage your account, you can change the frequency. You can get them daily or weekly or no summaries at all um, because they do come from each Google Classroom. So you have to click on the settings once you activate your account and then update your frequency. Here are some samples of what you will receive in your email. Um, it explains the course, anything that's missing, what's coming up, and then the assignments that they submitted. Again, it does not show grades. Um, I know some parents have been trying to access the Google Classroom to actually see the work. Again, as I stated, due to privacy laws, you cannot access the Google Classroom unless you have your child's information, um, but you will not have your own Google Classroom access code. Um, and if once you accept the invite, the emails will be sent to the email that you subscribe to. It has to be, again, a Gmail account. And that's it for me. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Lorraine Cruz, the elementary reading instructional lead teacher. Today, we're gonna be going over how we can support our transitional and fluent readers. You'll be able to find this presentation in our Akakik Academy website under a virtual school under the K-5 Reading ILT Cloud. The purpose of this meeting is to continue to provide a resource for our parents to understand the process of reading. Again, this, in, this is not a set of expectations for our parents, more so hopefully something you find beneficial that you'll be able to integrate um, into your home life. So tonight we're going to revisit our literacy assessments and our intervention programs, um, share tips on how to support our transitional readers to become more fluent and share information about our um, after school book clubs. So currently our students are taking their online adaptive test. Um, you may have received some of these reports from our teachers uh, via email or through, through your parent conferences yesterday. Um, they 
are, they should have started their literacy pro screener, which is for the online library. Our students in K2 um, will start their practice test and do a tech check-in to make sure all the technology is in place for MAP fluency. And that assessment will begin next week. So our focus last time was for our early, in, early emergent and emergent readers. Today, we're gonna to focus on our transitional and fluent readers. These readers, um, they find reading more automatic. They're, they can um, have proper pauses and expression. They have richer vocabulary. They have a greater bank of high frequency words. Uh, they're less reliant on pictures and they're for the most part able to decode any unknown words. Um, and you can see just by the visuals as they go from transitional to fluent, uh, the text is, is much more um, and again, less reliant on our pictures. So what could we do to support our readers? So oftentimes we may have students who get to um, third grade or even second grade and they're struggling readers. And so what PGCPS has put into place is an intervention for our K2 students uh, called iRead. And this is, um, is an intervention program where it goes over phonemic awareness, phonics and sight words. So those some of this um, item, some of these strategies and skills may seem um, very simple uh, to an adult eye. They're very important for moving our students along to make sure that they have these fundamental um, knowledge in place and that there are no gaps. And not only will this help with reading, but also support them with writing. Um, so these were some of the strategies that I shared for decoding. It does not mean that uh, we've moved on to transition and fluid, that we don't need these strategies anymore. You're always going to come across, no matter how old you are, um, with unknown words. So being able to uh, self-monitor and sound out words, chunk out words, use out content clues is going to remain um, very vital as we move along these reading levels. So now that we are in this transitional space of, you know, um, in grades three through five, uh, also in second grade, you may hear your students complete assignments like identify the main idea, um, sequences, events of the stories and so forth. But in able to um, do these skills, they must have these strategies in place like making connections, asking questions, making inferences, visualizing, determining the importance of information, monitor comprehension, and understand text structure. So these are self-monitoring strategies that you do as a reader. So when it comes to inferencing, you're using the clues from the text to make predictions and make inferences. You're constantly making connections based on what you've read in the past and other texts, uh, things that you know based on yourself and the world around you. Uh, with visualizing, again, we're going into higher level text. So there's not often that there's picture support. So students and um, children should be able to be able to um, make movies as they read in order to help synthesize the information and build upon the ideas, um, determining the importance of what they're reading. Uh, it could be fiction or nonfiction, um, seeing what information you need to answer questions, also the author's purpose. And lastly, um, the questioning and asking meaningful questions before, during, and after they read. So you may or may not seen this type of visual before. This is called Bloom's Taxonomy, and it's the classification of learning outcomes or objectives. So, you know, you may see student ob um, objectives posted in um, your Google Classrooms where uh, students have to classify or define, um, and there's a hierarchy of these levels. I put um, a visual up top of the triangle. That's what we were taught in teacher school, um, but what we found is that it's not always linear, and I found that the circular model is a better um, visual for it because it's um, these skills that you must encompass. So for instance, if you're evaluating, you must be able to remember and understand the text in order to apply and analyze, therefore to evaluate. Um, so, you know, in K, you start with recalling, uh, 
information or like who are the characters in the story um, and it builds from there. So it's uh, the reason why I bring this up is that, you know, when we even have conversations with our students to have that higher level of thinking more thought provoking, use these types of verbs when you're talking to help them construct and understand the world around them. So what are some examples of higher level questions? So instead of asking what happened next in the story, you can ask, what can you predict will happen next in the story based on Chloe's action? So that involves, that involves more level four and five where you're analyzing and um, evaluating the text. Another example is, what did Chloe do in the story? Think about what Chloe did in the story. Would you make some, would you make the same choice or would you do something different? Again, that higher level of thinking and, um, you know, branching away from just recalling information. But we also hear, well, my child just doesn't like to read. And what we need to do as, um, you know, role models in our students' lives is, the philosophy of uh, the practice that we do as teachers, I do, we do, and you do, and is allow your children to see you reading at home and make it a priority at home. You know, find a system that works for you, um, reading 20 minutes after dinner, make it fun. Um, you know, that's a time, a perfect time to turn off technology, um, but also to find ways to make it um, interesting and break away from your system sometimes. Go outside, um, read under the blankets with flashlights, um, build their in Interest. And by doing this, you're going to build their reading stamina. Uh, just like athletes, it takes lots of practice. Um, so start with five minutes, celebrate those five minutes, have them um, share out what they're learning, and gradually add more minutes. Again, build around their background knowledge. You may come to books that you might not know a lot about. So watch short videos, search for pictures. These are things that we do as teachers that I know that 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 are at your fingertips through um, technology. So utilize um, those resources. Think aloud, again, model those reading strategy, strategies, stop occasionally and share your thoughts, feelings, and wonderings. And of course, choose high interest topics. Find just right books. So that's where our Literacy Pro comes into play. So you have books readily available to you and explore different types of genres. So we typically put them in fiction and nonfiction, but you can see there are many subcategories. Um, we for our younger ones, we start with our fairy tales and picture stories. But I highly encourage that you tap into genres, and a way of doing that is maybe doing a book genre bingo um, to you know explore because you never know until you try. One thing that our, I find transitional readers um, more opted to um, gravitate towards are graphic novels. And they're exactly what it looks like. It's like comic book style chapter books. Um, and here are a couple of um, titles and authors. Um, some of these titles are remakes. Um, I am not sure if you remember the Babysitter's Clubs. Those were traditional chapter books that have turned into graphic novels. Other things that you can do is provide a dictionary, have a dictionary on handy or show them how to get on dictionary.com. Um, so that way they can be, uh, they can self um, monitor when they don't understand something, they can look for the answers themselves, strengthen their knowledge of prefixes and suffixes um, because um, when, along with the root word, once you have the understanding, you'll be able to determine the word's meaning without having to look it up. Um, another thing is log into our and complete the intervention program daily. For K2, we have iRead. For 3.5, we have iReady. We have our online library through Literacy Pro for K5. And coming soon to support grammar, prefixes, suffixes, all those uh, is hopefully we'll get our um, spelling city for grades two through six. Um, so to help support our students, we are going to offer a club for our K2. Um, they're going to be on Wednesdays after lunch from 1.45 to 2.15. Um, and it's just a fun time to just explore different genres and multicultural books. And our start date will be on Wednesday, October 28th, and it will be shared through Class Dojo.
And for grades three through five, we are going to go through um, go through with continuing our book club. We had a successful book club during the spring. We're going to do after school Mondays and Wednesdays from four to five. Um, our interest meeting will be next Monday, October 19th, um, and we'll share a time for that too. And there we're going to go over um, rules and expectations along with voting for the book that we want to do a book study on. And our start day will be the following Monday on October 26th. So again, if you have have any questions, please feel free to reach out at lorraine.cruz at pgcps.org. And also this um, presentation is available at our ACAGI website. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, this is Mr. Karanze. I am the middle school STEM fair coordinator. So what is STEM fair project? So every year our students is uh, working on the STEM fair project. It requires the students to complete an investigation through authentic research. And while working on the STEM fair, students will be able to conduct research. They have to develop a hypothesis, create a, um, a hypothesis, conduct an investigation and draw conclusions based on their investigations. Um, STEM means it's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So students will be able to complete projects that is related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And this um, STEM fair is actually part of our science curriculum. Students will be able to make connections to science and engineering practices. So what are these science and engineering practices? So students will be able to ask questions, define problems, they will develop models, and then they will carry out and plan investigation based on their questions. They will analyze data and results. They're gonna go in also to use math skills and computational thinking. And then they were gonna go in to construct their thinking through explanation. They will design solutions. They will also engage in arguments based on the facts and evidence. And there's a the time they're gonna go in to evaluate and communicate information. So after they will do their STEM project, they're gonna go in to present it to the class, they're gonna go in to present it to the school and they're gonna go in to present it to the county. Now we are actually recommending that every student enrolled in our school in Ahokie Academy from six, seven and eight have to complete a STEM fair project. However, due to COVID related issues this year, this school year students will not earn grade nor extra credit for completing STEM fair project. So how are we gonna go into move it forward? Okay, and so you may be asking yourselves um, because the county is not making it a mandate, how is Akakik Academy going to proceed? So we are going to, of course, adhere to, adhere to the guidelines that the county has set forth. However, we will still continue to incorporate scientific inquiry into our lessons on a regular basis. And conducting investigations is at the heart of all of our science classes. So whether a student chooses to participate in the county science fair or not, they will still be expected to complete an investigation that will be given by their science teachers as a whole class. And the purpose of this is to ensure that our students continue to experience scientific investigation through data collection, writing scientific explanations that mirror the actual STEM fair itself. And these skills are very vital and useful when it comes to preparing our eighth grade students to take the MISA in the spring. So moving forward, uh, if we have students that are also willing to move forward in participating in the county fair, um, students are still required to have to complete the approval packet. And this packet needs to be approved by the teacher and parents and guardians are also needs to sign the student approval packet. So while we're working on our STEM fair and also in our science investigations as a class, students will be able to identify the independent defendant variables. They're also gonna go in to identify what is the difference between constants and control. So as of this week and since last week, our students already experienced how to identify the variables and differentiate between constants and control. So that is a very basic um, terms that the students need to know about scientific investigations. 
So here is our project timeline. So um, those students who are gonna go in to do their STEM fair project, our teachers are already introducing the STEM fair like projects and then students are required to submit their research topic ideas, project questions from the dates October 19th to 23rd. And then once they have already their project questions and their hypothesis and questions with those in the identified variables, students are gonna go in to complete the student science project approval. The project um, packet will gonna be provided by the teachers and it will be submitted between October 26th to 30th. So throughout November, students are gonna go in to write their materials, conduct their experiments and investigations. By last week before the winter break, students are expected to finish their investigation. All projects will be put in Google Slides and students will be presenting their Stanford project between December 14th to 18th. And then our Akoki Academy school-based STEM fair will gonna be on January 13th of 2021. From there, we will choose six projects that will move towards the county STEM fair. Our county STEM fair will gonna be um, on March 19th to March 20th of next year. So based uh, from the last past three years, we have a lot of winners from our, from our school. So we have first placers, second placers, third placers, and even honorable mentions. So every year, all our students that are joining, that were joining in the PGCPL, a PGASF, they came back home with flying colors. So these are some of the students who garnered some places. And we have also two students from our school, Elijah Shah and Elijah, I mean, Esmael Shah and Elijah Merrill, who participated in the Broadcom Master Competition. This is a nation's premier middle school STEM competition. So these are some of the participants who participated in our Prince George's STEM fair. It's Portland. Good afternoon. I am Mrs. Brackett, and we are so excited about the book fair. Instead of viewing the book fair in school, students and families can now view and purchase books online. Our virtual book fair will kick off on October the 20th through November the 2nd. This is a wonderful opportunity to encourage students to build their own personal at-home library and encourage a love of reading while building their reading muscles. Let's listen to a special news report from Akakik Academy's TV studio class. So while he's working on that, presentation this the students put together a video about the book fair the virtual book fair they were really excited about it and they wanted an opportunity to show or to present to Akakik Academy all the different ways that they could purchase their books so for purchasing their books Akakik Academy will be able to go online to purchase their books they will have two different links. There will be a link for the upper campus and a link for the lower campus. All items will be shipped directly to the home of the purchaser. Orders will process, will be processed from 24 to 48 hours and the order can take seven to 10 days to ship. One thing they're offering is free shipping on books only orders. On the free ship. Okay, hold on, Mr. King. On the free shipping only of books, you're gonna get free shipping for on books. But for example, if you want to make a purchase that are non-book purchases, 
non-book items, you will have to pay shipping on that particular item. So I suggest that you make two purchases, one with books, which will not incur any cost at all for shipping. And then one, if you wanna include non-book items, which will incur shipping costs. Make sure that when you go and use the links that you use the right link for the lower campus and the upper campus. Make sure to use those links so that we can get credit for our books. And if you have any questions, you can contact me. Right now, we're gonna see a clip. We can use this clip to um, see what's actually inside of the virtual book fair. Mr. King, you can show this clip. I'm not just any gorilla. You'll see. We're in this together, kid. We're family. Strong. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna fix the show. It's the wildest. It's how Peggy wants things to be. Sometimes just uh, take a leap of faith. Disney's the one and only Ivan with PG now streaming exclusively on Disney Plus. See the movie. Read the book. Look for it at your Scholastic Book Fair. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, you can contact me at borough.bracket at pgcps.org if you have any questions. Ms. Brackett, I have a quick question. Yes. When, where will the links be posted for elementary school and middle school? Okay, there's a flyer. Uh, we're gonna post the flyers in a dojo and on the website. So that's where they, they'll be posted. And also I'll make sure that the teachers have them, have those links as well to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to access the virtual book fair. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. King, could you go back to the uh, students commercial for our book fair? Yes. Um, Thank you. Stand by. Uh, when I um, click the link, it's click the picture. When I click it, it seems like it's the wrong video. Oh, it is the wrong video. I have it up if I can share my screen. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Brackett. While we're pulling up the student commercial, uh, I just want to say some um, that we as a school have seen some very wonderful projects from our students, uh, which we'd like to share at some point with you as well. But this is uh, one that was done by our television studio crew. Ms. Brackett. Oh, hold on one second. Let me stop the share. Make sure I have the video on. I also like to encourage you to ask your questions in the chat that Ms. Payne is monitoring at this time so we can uh, forward those questions to our uh, panel. Okay, we're ready. Okay. Oh, 
I look like I'm having technical difficulties, but it just worked. I'll stop sharing for now and see, can I work on that? So as Ms. Brackett um, takes care of our technical difficulties, I'd like to ask Ms. Payne to come forward. Ms. Payne, um, do we have any questions in the chat? Good evening, Dr. Adams. We do not. We are chat free. I'm doing all the talking today. <laughs> <laughs> Just reiterating um, a lot of the information that our presenters have provided. So that way it's there just in case the parents or students missed it. But again, we know that it'll be posted on our website as well, this presentation. Okay, I think I'm ready. Okay. Hello, Aqua Kick Academy Scholars. I'm Zaria Higginbotham. And I'm Melissa. And we have some breaking news. What is the news? The book fair. What do you mean the book the fair? The Scholastic Book Fair is here. What? Now let's talk with our reporter, Jack Nate. Hey guys, my name is Jacob Chabra, and today we have some very exciting news. The book fair is finally back, and we're open on October 20th. And we're end on. Where we adding new items and books. Let's go to John for more information. These are some few facts about the book fair. The book fair will be open 24/7. Yes, 24/7. You can get a book whenever you want. You can improve your reading skills by reading interesting books. During the virtual book fair, you can order books and items at home. The virtual book fair is available at Scholastic.com anytime. But hurry, it will. It will be open for two weeks. You can see here there is a very big variety of books here. This search bar right here allows you to search any book by title, author, keyword, or ISBN. Schoolastate.com on a computer, phone, or a tablet. It's very easy to browse through a web page and find any book that you want. Wow, this is so exciting. Well, guys, this has been the Aki Geek Academy Bye. News. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Brackett. Thank you so much for providing that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. I know it was a lot of information shared, but I hope it was valuable to each of you. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks for our next family table. Thank you again and have a wonderful evening.